Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Lord, we come to you this morning and we, we thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace and we just pl- pray that you would Bless Pastor Izzy. Use him to encourage each one of us, Lord, to feed us, to draw us near to you, to help us better understand who you are, and uh, help us uh, be encouraged this day. Lord, whatever challenges or distractions we have, Lord, we just pray you keep those away, that we can, we can trust you for each and every problem that we face. Lord, and for those, th- those people that have, are celebrating today, Lord, we just pray that you would, would let them encourage and, and ha- see, have joy in all the things that you've done in their life. For those that got baptized last week, we lift them up. We ask you to pray to continue to touch their lives. And for uh, those from the local Korean church, Joe and everybody who's out on outreach right now, we just lift them up and we just ask you to bless their ministry. Pray that you pour out the word and, uh, and, and the gospel, Lord, in, in the lands they go. We ask this now in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, what a beautiful day the Lord has given us. That light breeze, just perfect. And uh, whoever's been praying for our air conditioning, you have it set just right. Just keep praying right there. Just a nice light breeze. And we trust the Lord for, when you're at a church on the beach, you have to trust the Lord for even your AC. And I mean, people from the mainland look at, what? You pray for your air conditioning? I said, yeah, it can get warm out here when the, without any breeze. But, but it's a nice day. We had the whales right out there. In fact, the boats seem to have keyed into where they are. So if anyone sees them break the water or jump, just signal to Dylan, 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 and he can film. We have multiple cameras to um, film with, and w- uh, he can use the big one and zoom out. If you want to show your friend um, whales on the beach, you know, uh, uh, our, our setting that we have, go to the Christmas message that I did on the Virgin Mary, and the last five minutes or so of the thing, while I'm ending the message, he cuts away to the footage of the whales that was filmed here that day. So, if you want, you know, say, oh, you want to see what we get to see while we're sitting in the church uh, chairs <coughs> in our pews? Uh, this is our this is our church wallpaper, and you you can have fu- fun sharing it with your friends. So the Virgin Mary study uh, just was the Christmas message. It's on YouTube. Now some people are asking, how do you get to that? Just go to AmazingGraceKona.com, and then there's a link right on the front of the page that says follow us on YouTube. Just t- click on it and it'll jump you right to the right page. And if you don't mind, put the thumbs up. No thumbs down, just thumbs up. <laughs> and, uh, and, and subscribe if you haven't already. It doesn't cost it. One of the aunties asked me, that, how, how do you, I don't even know what subscribe means. All it means is that you're, you're saying that when another video is posted, you want, they'll send a, 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 a notice to your email saying, Amazing Grace has posted another video, and you can watch it whenever you want. And it um, doesn't cost anything. You just need an email. And uh, if you never have done a YouTube post, you just click it, and, and it, it says click here to subscribe. You enter your email, and then you make up your own password. Make up one you'll remember, okay? And then, uh, and then just put a password in there, and that's, your, that's all it is to being on YouTube, you know, to, to basically let them know that you're interested in something. We have 98 subscribers, or we did this m- last night. I don't know what we're up to this morning, but uh, the kids told me we're going to have a centennial party. You know, because we we almost have a hundred subscribers. I can, uh, like, ooh, a centennial party! Wow, we're we're real big time after a month on YouTube. So, uh, so somebody who who hasn't subscribed, raise your hand. I want to just see, because uh, I need two more. <laughs> go home and do it, and then uh, no, you don't even have to go home. Just hand it to one of the kids. I'll do it for you right here on the beach. But you're, with your, you, I'm not kidding. Someone was over yesterday going, I can't do this, and I said, hand it to Dylan. He's like, dude, dude, you're done. You know, we hand it to Dylan, Michelle, one of the young. When you don't know, just ask a 12-year-old, you know, a 10-year-old. They, they, they're fearless. They just, and they're done. So that's my plug for our YouTube. This is, uh, this is really encouraging, guys. The, the words of uh, Aloha is the name of these sermons on YouTube, and it's jumped all the way to the top now. When you type in words of Aloha to search on YouTube, we're at the top. We're the top 10 listings in YouTube, which is a real blessing. And, uh, um... And the words of encouragement, I don't know why we picked that title, but um, it's shared by 252,000 other YouTube videos. 
So we have two or three of ours on the front page now, right at the top. So uh, I'm really grateful the kids, they know all the tricks, how to turn it on, make it play. And YouTube thinks, oh, this guy's really getting listened to. But the one on depression that we did, just a little short Bible study at Youth Night on depression. If you know anyone fighting depression or suicide, feeling suicidal or like just like giving up on life, I want you to... Click on that words of uh, encouragement one, and you can hit the share button, and, and it'll give you options. You can share it to their email, to their Facebook, whatever, and you can send a little link on to your friend. Maybe you know someone that needs that. And it, it has been um, watched like 2,800 times on Facebook, the one on depression, and 355, I think it was last night, on, on YouTube already. So... It's the right word at the right, you know, on the holiday times, we have people that are, are down. They miss a family, they're depressed, or they feel like dying. I don't, you know, maybe you're not a preacher, but I am, okay? And I don't mind sharing what the Word of God says to give them a little word of, how, how, how often do we need encouragement anyway, according to the Bible? It says, encourage one another, Hebrews 4.16 says, encourage one another day after day, as long as today is called what? Trick question. Today. Ta-da. That's it. As long as today is... I mean, okay, so wait. Let me process this. Hmm. As long as today is called today. Wait. Um, we're on today. Yep. Checked. Today is still today. So then it says, I have to encourage one another as long as it's still... Now, when we get to tomorrow, tomorrow will then be... You got it. Today. And guess what that means? We have to encourage each other all over again. And we get to the day after tomorrow. And what do we get to? Today. This works every day. I finally figured it out. God was smart. Akamai. He, he knew. This is, um, this is a God who knows we need encouragement every single day. And if you're not in the habit of encouraging people, let me encourage you to start off this year doing this. Every day, say something encouraging to someone. Because the Bible shares what Paul, when he was writing to one of the churches, he says, I can't wait to be together with you guys so that I might encourage you. And in so doing, while I'm encouraging you, guess what he said happens? God gets to do this work in him. He says, and I too will be encouraged. When you, when you are a vessel for encouragement, when you just speak encouraging words to someone, guess what? You're not only lifting them up, but God's Spirit flows through you. And just His Spirit putting those, those things from Him in your mouth to that person, guess what will happen for your faith? Your heart. Your heart will be lifted up. And this is not something... I, I mean, since He put it in, as long as today is called today lingo, it pretty much says it's something we have to do all the time. It's, it's not... Don't think of this as optional. Like... Maybe I'll do it if I don't feel cranky <laughs> or whatever, you know. You have to do this every day. And you need it. You need someone to speak encouraging words to you. And you need to be a vessel that God uses to speak encouraging words to others. Every single day. Now, if I'm going to get people started off on the right spiritual leg for this new year, since this is the second message of the new year, I got to get them to do the stuff that's, I, I admit, I'm a practical teacher when it comes to biblical things. I want you to do the stuff that works. This works. If you would commit to teaching or, or speaking encouraging words to people every day, as long as it's still called today, what will it do for your year? By the end of the but wait, okay, how many of you have someone in your life that when they do speak to you, they always seem to be the positive, encouraging person? Does anybody have someone like that in your life? Raise your hand. If you have someone that actually comes to mind and you think, now when you have a person like that in your life, is it a good thing? Like, like <clears throat> does anyone have it? No, don't raise your hands because I don't really. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, does anyone have anybody that's discouraging when they come around? What? They like multiply. They're like all over the place. I don't know. There's, there's these people that just are downers all the time. You volunteering? <laughs> Dotty. No, she's misencouragement. Don't don't even she cannot go there. We do not believe you, Dot. But um 
But when it comes to, when, when you have someone coming toward you that you know that is a real bummer, I mean, they're, they're the down, you know, Eeyore in, 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 the, in the flesh. I mean, they just, the sky is falling. You know, it's going to be a bad day. And yeah, how do you feel about those people when they come around? I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm just like, duck out, man. You, you're coming down the grocery aisle and you see them go by. You're like, oh, let's go this way. You know, because it's like, no, no, bad. No, we, we, we were wired. We need encouragement, not discouragement. And this is, a, this is something to start off your year to get you on the right page. Now, that's why we called the, the uh, kids thing words of encouragement. We just made little, the attention span of the youth today has shrunk. I don't know if you've noticed, but the digital devices have, ha have done us a disservice. They want the answer and they want it now. And I remember asking questions. I was sharing this with Dylan in school. There were things I wanted to learn about. And the teacher I'd ask, and they go, we don't know that. We'll have to find a, someone else who studied that area. And, and I was one of those accelerated students. So I was asking kind of strange questions for a young man, you know, like, why in physics is this uh, theorem, you know, not a law, or why is this? this? And the, the, the teacher would look at me like, well, I don't know. We're going to ask someone else, you know. And, and it would trickle through the teachers till they found some. The nice thing was I was in this, this setting where they actually said, if we don't know, we'll look to find someone who does know. But do you know that the process of finding out some of my answers to those questions, do you know it didn't happen like Google? You know, do, do, do. Yeah, not that one, not that one. Oh, there we go, you know. It, sometimes it would take months to find out the answer to the question because it was finding the right person who had that answer, then getting it back to the person, to the teacher, to that, you know, down. It, it wasn't this instant gratification. So I guess I just thought gaining knowledge is something that takes time, something that you just work at, and it, it's, not, it's not always immediate. That's not bad, though, because today we're going to look at Galatians chapter 5, and we're going to continue looking at the fruits of the Spirit. And we've already done the first three. We did love was the first one. Then we saw that there's joy, my daughter's name, easy for me to remember. And then peace. And then today we pick up with the next one, which is the one that most people don't want me to talk about. Like, Pastor, please don't talk about this next fruit. I hate it when you talk about it because that usually means I have to have some spiritual adjustments in my life in this area. And which one is it? Hurry up. What is it? Hurry, hurry, hurry up. <laughs> it's patience. Patience. In fact, today we're going to take a closer look at patience, and I hope to share some things that will help you to become more patient. You know, in a, in a way that the Lord, only the Lord can help us, I believe, to become more patient people. I mean, it's something that is truly a fruit of His Spirit in our life. If you don't, anyone can give amen to that, that it's God's Spirit that helps us to grow in patience. I mean, if you've been a Christian a while, you might have already figured this out by just your Christian journey and learning this. But, but patience is the next fruit of the Spirit that we see in the Scripture. Now, patience, if you've... I had another confession. Anyone here ever felt impatient besides me? Never. She's never. You don't need the sermon. You can leave now. No, wait. There's still one more. Kindness. Better stay. Um, we all have different areas to work on. <laughs> so when it comes, when it comes, she's kind already. So, okay. You're, you're, oh, there's a whale. My wife's, oh, yeah, there it is right there. Dylan, over there between the trees. Wait, I'm going to get down out of the way. I have learned. Oh, this camera automatically tracks me. Watch this. Do, 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 do. Follow me, camera. I'm going to aim it towards the whale. This is the fun of modern technology. Okay, it's over there. See, cheese. Come on. There he is. There she blows. Wait, I better duck down. Oh, no, it goes down with me. Stay. <sighs> oh, yeah. You can tell people all day that you have whales on iTunes. They don't believe you. But now I have photographic proof. The whales are here. Okay, that means they're heading this way, it looks like, so they're going to come right into view. 
in about 10 minutes. They go down for about 10 to 15 minutes. They pop back up, and they usually go about the length, about 50 yards from where you saw them. So just in your mind, picture from there to somewhere between the rock and this tree should be the next thing. So listen to the sermon, but watch the water, okay? <laughs> You've already seen my mug. You don't have to worry about that. Oops, Joy's picture fell out. My marker. For those of you who didn't know, when you're watching on YouTube and you see pictures of my family, th those are my page markers. I'm, I'm so spiritual, I mark all my pages with pictures. And Yeah, and I got a new Bible, finally, after 25 years. And I'm lost. I mean, everything is... I bought the, I bought the one with big print for my eyes. And um, it has... Uh, uh, well, my other one had 1,181 pages. This one has 1,934, so it's spaced out farther, and it means um, i got to learn another extra 800 pages <laughs> to memorize. Oh. So if I'm a little off my game, just have grace with me. I, I'm learning where everything, everything has moved. I know the verses. I just can't find them in here yet, so <laughs> it's a weird, it, but I'm going, I'm going for it. It's a new year. I'm going, I'm going full gusto, okay, so. I do want to show you a verse, though, from Peter that helped me grow in patience. It's the probably the main, seriously, the main thing that has m curbed my impatience with people. This one thing that Peter the Apostle learned from Jesus. See, if you're ever going to learn things in the Spirit, always go to a good source. And having Peter the Apostle... Who, who learned from Jesus, right? He, he was with Jesus. He was on the inner circle, Peter, James, and John. They got to go to the Mount of Transfiguration. They got to do all the fancy stuff. If those guys got to sit there with Jesus and learn, and they say, I got something to share with you. I don't know about you, but I'm like this. Forget E.F. Hutton. You know, remember on the commercials when we were young, when E.F. Hutton speaks, and everyone went dead silent, everyone went, <gasps> and they all listen. Forget that. When Jesus speaks, that's when I want my spirit to listen. I want to say, what do you have to say to me? Well, this is Second Peter. This is when Peter the Apostle knew he was, he was about to die. And he's going to share these words. It's, it's found in, um, he says in, in verse 3 of chapter 3, Second Peter 3.3. 3. He said, know this first of all, in the last days mockers will come with their mockings. They're following after their own lusts. And they're saying, where is the promise of his coming? For ever since the fathers fell asleep, all continues just as it was from the beginning. For when they maintain this, it escapes their notice that by the word of God, the heavens existed long ago. And the earth was, was created. It was formed out of water by water, through which it says the world also at that time w was destroyed, being flooded with water. But this word, I'm sorry, but by, by his word, the present heavens and earth are being reserved for fire, kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men. Now, don't get bummed out. This thing's going to, Peter's going to say, this whole thing we see here, it's getting replaced. Who, where did he learn this from? Jesus. He says, but l do not let this one fact escape your notice. He says right here, he says, with the Lord, one day is like how many years? A thousand. And a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some count slowness, but he's patient toward you, not wishing, or the old King James is not willing, that any should what? Perish. But that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord, he says, will come like a thief, in which the heavens will pass away and a roar, uh, uh, with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the earth and its works will be burned up. Now, since all these things are to be destroyed in this way, he says, what sort of people ought you to be in a holiness and a holy and godly conduct? He says, looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of, of which the heavens will be destroyed by burning, the elements will melt with intense heat. But according to his promise, we're looking not for that. For we're looking for a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, he says, beloved, since, 
since you look for these things, how many look for the, forward to new heaven and new earth? Remember in Revelation it says the lion will lie down with the lamb, or the, uh, another translation writes the wolf will lie down with the. How 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 good do lions and lambs and or wolves and lambs get along? I mean, the not what doesn't work here but in the new heaven and the new earth those critters will be laid and you know my kid my kids are like dad can we go lean up against the lion and you know because when we went to the zoo just at christmas time these lions were so majestic sitting in the in the cages and the sun was coming down and they looked and they looked soft you know, we, we were, of course, we had this big chasm fixed so they couldn't get at us, and we're behind bars so that, but when you peek through, I was like, I want to, someday, you know how we bring our dogs and put them next to us and pet them, and they just lean on you? How would it be to use one lion for a throw pillow? Just lean back and just, like, scratch his little, you know, under his chin and just, hey, boy, how's it going? Be and, and not worry about him eating your head off, okay? This is... This is like stuff that Peter, now who taught in this? Jesus. So if you ever wonder if this is, you know, uncredible kind of theology, you're okay. You got this solid. This is from Jesus himself telling Peter this. Peter's just repeating. So Peter says, listen to this. Therefore, beloved, verse 14, 2 Peter 3, 14. Now this is really important. Therefore, beloved, since you look for these things, be diligent to be found in him, in Jesus, in peace, spotless and blameless. And regard the patience of the Lord to be something. What? To be salvation. Now, if you're not, haven't had time to ever process this verse, let me help you. He says, regard the patience of the Lord to be salvation. Like, why is God waiting to send Jesus? You ever thought, what, what, what's the holdup? Why, why, as far as I'm concerned, and I'll share this, and this is kind of a brutal thing to say, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm already in the club. I already got my ticket to go in to heaven. I'm in the club. And, and as, if you ask me, it should be just fine. It's fine with me, Lord, if you come now. Because I'm ready to go. Anyone here ready to go? I mean, if the Lord said, time to go. Anyone ready to go be in heaven right now? That's like, like the line has just grown. Boom. You know, we're out of here. Let's go. But what about our friends or loved ones that don't know the Lord yet? See, it says his will is that none should perish. He, this is the source of my patience is this very thought. That my God has enough patience. Well, first of all, he was patient enough to wait for me to get in the club. Like, what if he would have come, you know, in the 60s, 70s, they had this Jesus people movement, and there was a big revival, and, and the Lord used Billy Graham was preaching back then, and I mean, they were filling stadiums, and people were coming to the Lord. Oh, there's the whales. Okay. Get real thin here. Shoot past me. Now, that thing tracks me. See this little tracker in my pocket? Wherever I move, that camera goes, come with me. Look at that. Ooh. That's my virtual photographer. But there they are, right there. Okay, guys, if Jan, come over here, honey. I want you to see. You have to look. She can't look through Dylan. Right right around him. He, he's getting it. Okay, <coughs> those of you that can't see from where you're sitting, just check out our YouTube video. <laughs> it will be on today's service. This is the coolest thing ever, man, for me. This is, oh, there she blows. See those puffs on the water? There's the back right there, a little baby one. Oh, there's the tail. That's not a baby. That was a big one. Praise the Lord. I mean, now, now just remember to tithe extra because you got a whale show and a <laughs> sermon. No. <laughs> Doesn't that sound like something they do in some? We don't, we don't do that. Just enjoy what the Lord has given us, man. What a cool thing. So let me... Let this sink in f for you today. Despite the whales giving a wonderful ambiance, listen to this message. If you could remember, God was patient enough to wait for you to be saved, to be in the club. I, you know, if, if I, I, I've, heard, I've seen tape of Billy Graham preaching, and oh man, he was on fire. 
Here's like telling people, get ready. The Lord's coming could be any day. We don't, you know, the signs of the times and everything, they're unfolding, right? And, and, and are they unfolding even more now than when he was preaching? Yeah. I mean, it's like, wake up. We're at the end of the, th we are so close. But our nature is very selfish. And we tend to only think about us. I'm the important one. At least I'm in the club. Now let's go, Lord. Get on with it. And the Lord's going, but I'm patient. I waited for you. But I'm still waiting for your friend and for your co-work. And even if you can receive it, he's even waiting for some of your enemies. Jesus said, pray for your enemy. If you've never thought this one through, the best thing you can do for an enemy is pray that God saves them. Like Saul was an enemy of the church. He was a persecutor of the Christians. He was killing the Christians. And the Lord took this persecutor and turned him into a proclaimer of the gospel. From, from persecutor to preacher. That was a good one, by the way. The Lord, you know, did Paul serve the Lord with any fervency? Did the gospel get out to that guy? I mean, that dude was zealous. First, he was zealous for the wrong thing. Some people get all cranky about people that are zealous for wrong things. I say, good material to save. I mean, look, if these ISIS guys were as zealous for Jesus as they are for their crazy stuff, can you imagine the revival we'd see in the Middle East? I mean, these guys, they would, they would just go berserko, you know, they would start preaching to everybody get saved and if you can receive does god want them to yes see don't don't ever get an exclusivity uh you know i'm better than god that's a good thing i'm in the club because huh, god needed me no the lord is the lord because he's so loving and merciful and kind he lets you in he let me in and if you want to find out where the source of my patience comes from, it's from this understanding that God is waiting for some others to join us. And he waited for us. And when I think it through that way, that, Lord, you were kind enough to wait for me, and, 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 and I have seen you bring others to you just in the 30 years I've been following you, I know I'm, if they were saying we were close to Christ's return back then, I know we're really close. We're 30 years, 35 years closer, actually, than when I first believed. 1979, in February, I gave my life to Jesus. I know we are much closer than that day. And they were t saying, look how close, look how close. The Lord could come any minute. I remember Pastor Chuck Smith going, I don't think we're going to make it to 1980. You know, seriously, he was looking at the news, the world, what was going on. It seems like Jesus could come. All of the signs of the time, you know, earthquakes, famines, pestilence. Do we have any of that stuff? And there'll be like a woman in travail, it says. And guys, we need to look at it through the eyes of God. That he's waiting for more souls. And if we keep that understanding, guess what happens to our patience in the spirit? It will grow. You will become more patient. You'll be like, you know, that person's a jerk, but, but God wants to save him. And some people have said to me, how can you put up with that jerk? I'm like, I'm just waiting for God to save him. Seriously, I'm, it's that easy, right? I mean, the, does the Lord want to save them? Yeah. And you will find, if you can keep this in your mind, this is, this is the one thing, it's like the key that unlocked that mystery of how to be patient. Because I was not wired with patience. I don't know about you guys. I, wait is like the word. Yes or no was okay, but wait. Well, don't tell me. When mom or dad said wait, it was like a knife to the heart. Like, I hate that answer. Yes or no would be okay, but wait is like uh, indefinite. Now I got to be patient. And I just don't do patience. Well, anyone else feel like that? Now I look at waiting differently. The Bible says if you wait upon the Lord, he does something for you. What's he do? He renews your strength. Well, wait a minute. That's a different kind of waiting. I mean, no, it's just waiting with your focus on who? On God. 
In fact, patience really is all about where our focus is. If our focus is on God and His will, we become patient with people. We just, you know, hey, God is just giving them some extra time. They need to be included in the club. He's still waiting to hand them a ticket for salvation. Enter the, the, the salvation train, you know. You, you, need, you need your ticket. Here's Jesus. They haven't received him yet. So God's just waiting. And if I keep that in mind, all of a sudden, I look at people with, through his spirit, you know. This is called the fruit of the spirit. His patience. And all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, I can wait. And sometimes I'm like, I wonder how long it's going to be till they... It's almost like you should give up now because God is really patient, dude. You might as well just surrender, wave the flag, and say, okay. I'll. Have you ever seen friends fight against coming to the Lord? I mean, the Lord's call calling them, and they're just like, no, 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 I'm resisting, I'm resisting. Finally, they, they cave, and they give in, and they come to the Lord. You're like, you should have gave up a long time ago. That was Because they're the most miserable during those, those pre-accepting Jesus days because they're, they know that they should, but they're not, I'm not doing it. I know you should, no, no I'm not. No, no, no. And then they're just, finally when they do it, they're like, oh, why didn't I do this sooner? It's like, I don't know, but you were stubborn. You got an A in stubborn. A in stupid too. But come to Jesus and get it over with, man. Get the ticket. Maybe you're the last one. You know, my hope is I'm going to be preaching this Sunday. Someone's ear is going to hear it. The Spirit's going to cry that word to their to their spirit and they're going to say yeah i have been holding out okay jesus i need you and when they do this is all over guys this will be like i'll be telling you and i've said this before but now that i have youtube i have to tell my youtube audience i pray that somehow i'm preaching the message that jesus wants to bring them salvation and he's just standing at the door knocking right he says behold i stand at the door i knock Anyone opens the door of their heart, what will he do? He'll come in. He'll sup with you. He will grant you everlasting life if you'll just open that door of your heart and say, Lord, come into me. Forgive me my sins. And when you do that, if you're that last soul that God is waiting for, which I'm working towards introducing to, the, to, to Christ, I, I, and I'm sure I'm not the only person, by the way, probably going to get to heaven. And, and, and as soon as you accept the Lord... There's going to be a trump that blasts, an angelic trumpet that will, that will herald throughout the whole of the world and it will declare the coming of the Lord. And when that trumpet goes off, I'm retired. I am done. Because I did what I was told to do. Share to the ones that need him. And boy, when we get to heaven, I, I, I pray, even this would be a great day. If you're one of the last ones, don't hold out. Just Come to Jesus, because then we're all going home. We're going to be with the Lord in paradise. Guys, let's just get it done. And the beauty of that is, like, <clears throat> if it should happen today, right while I'm preaching this, you give your heart to the Lord right while I'm speaking, and that trump blows, and I'll be in heaven going, I told you it was going to blow. Did I tell you? Wasn't I preaching? Good thing. There'll probably be about like a thousand other preachers going, I was the last one to lead them to learn. No, I was the last. Look, what time was it where you were at? Well, uh, Hawaii time, you know. Break it down to this. How many think that maybe there'll be souls coming to Christ everywhere in the globe in that last moment? I believe it'll be a last putting into the sickle to take, like it says in the Bible, to take that last fruit from the harvest. God's going to and take them in. But when you think about that, how does your heart feel about that idea that God wants everyone to be with him? He wants all to have everlasting life. Is that good for my heart to know? Yeah. And that right there, that understanding will help you to grow in your patience. Now, I was going to do kindness, but I went too long and we had whales. So how about I do kindness next week? I got a whole study for you. Sure, why not? We'll do kindness next week. And um, maybe I'll do the next one with kindness. I don't know. We'll see if I can do two. What's that? It's your patient, she says. It's okay. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I think kindness is very good. It's the next fruit of the Spirit. In fact, if you have a chance to read ahead, just start at verse 22 of Galatians 5 and read to into chapter 6. We're going to do... Um, I want to finish for the kids' sake each of these fruits one at a time. One, maybe two, <laughs> if I can. And, uh, and, and, and there's goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, we read. It says, again, such things as these. These things of the Spirit. There is no law. You know, the kids ask me, what can I get away with? What's okay with God? What's not okay? That, oh, you, you don't believe me? That's what they say. What, what, what can I get away with? In, it, you know what? It's not. Romans 14 says, it, the kingdom of God is not a bunch of rules of meat or drink, what we eat, what we drink, you know, how we do this, dress, where. It's about three things righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. It's, if I teach them to go by those things, what's right in God's sight? What is the things that are the peace of God when you're, when you're doing something, making a decision? Do you have peace from the Lord about it? You know, some people come to me and they're like making a life decision. Maybe they're, they're talking about who they're going to marry. And they're like, I don't really have any peace about this person, but I'm going to get married anyway because I got wrangled into this. If you have no peace about it, don't come to me for your premarital counseling. You're not going to like it. Well, well, you might. I don't know. Maybe I'll set you free. I'll just say, look. It's about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. If you don't have peace about it, should you be getting married to that person? Or if you, or if you feel it's not right in the sight of God, should you be doing it? It doesn't matter what it is that you're entertaining. If you want to know which way God wants to direct you, just... Use those three things as like gauges for your life. Say, Lord, is this all right with you? And if you get past gauge one, you can go to gauge two, peace, and you can say, okay, Lord, do I have peace in doing this? And if you pass righteousness and peace, you get to go to gauge three. And only, because the kingdom of God is all three of these things, not one. You don't get to go, well, I have peace. Ah. I had peace about killing some people when I was younger. <laughs> that didn't make it right. And it sure wouldn't have brought them any joy. Maybe me, but not them. You can't just use one of the three gauges and say it's okay. Now, if one of the three gauges give you a no reading, you, all, you don't even need to proceed to the other gauges. I teach this to the kids. If you don't have... You know, you, you know it's not right. Don't even bother checking the peace and joy gauge. It's off the table. You got your answer. But if you know it's right in the sight of God, but you're not sure, there's something, hold up, check the other two gauges. See, do you have peace? The peace of the Lord in doing this thing that you're entertaining. Or do you have, the, and if you get past that gauge, then you can go to the third one, joy. That's when you decide, okay, Good decision. It, 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 it may meets all three of the gauges. Righteousness, peace, and joy. Now I can proceed. When you learn this, your whole Christian experience becomes... It's, it's exciting. It's like, it's not like, oh, boomer. It's like, oh, right, let's see what God's going to do. We never know, man. It's just, he's, he, he can, can he do that? Can he show you righteousness? peace and joy in your heart this is the thing what he does better than anyone he does this for each of us individually and we've we've taken god and made him into like some heavy mystery instead of this practical simple thing that that people can live and walk with a living god we have a living god who he knows how to take in your heart and let you know it's right you how many of you ever been doing something you're like you know it's not right don't raise your hand i don't want <laughs> rebels <laughs> front row rebels yeah we we sometimes call the pastor at that point and say pastor i know i wasn't supposed to do this so uh what do i do now i get a lot of those calls <clears throat> james said in chapter four to him who knows the right thing to do and does not do it, it is sin so just do what you know is right let's be blessed this year let's have a year where we have more patience with people as we, as we grow in these fruits of the Spirit. 
And let's see what God will do. Do you think God will touch people around us if we become the encouraging, patient folk? I mean, how do you feel about people that are encouraging and patient with you? I love it, man. Bring me those ones. Why do I always get the other ones? <laughs> Dot said, like me? No, Dottie, you're a dear. Let's pray, shall we? Father, we thank you that we can come and celebrate the things that that you had transmitted from your son to Peter and to Paul. And, and these men would write these things inspired by your Holy Spirit so that we could hear them for our spirit. As we get ready to embark, Lord, and just, just in this early part of this new year, I pray these words would sink into our hearts, our minds. You would bring them to our remembrance when we need them, Lord, that we would become vessels for your Holy Spirit. You would fill our mouths with encouraging words, fill our actions with patience, Lord, as we wait to see those that don't know you come to know you. We pray even now. I pray for the people in ISIS that are opposing our nation and wanting to kill us, that you would save them and you would give them a change of heart, Lord, a conversion, just like you changed Paul when he was Saul. You made him Saul to Paul. Make these guys from persecutors to proclaimers of the gospel. Show mercy on them, Lord, as you've shown mercy to us. And we ask that now in Jesus' name. Everyone that agree with me said, Amen. Amen. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com, and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo, and God bless.